Hello everyone and welcome back to another movie review by Ian Talk. I'm your host Ian, and it's been a hot minute since my last movie review. My last review was on Jose, which was in December of last year, but that's because there were hardly any new Korean movies that released in that time. Basically all movies that were supposed to release in the latter part of December were delayed and January saw no release of major films. However, there's some good news as we're expecting a lot of new Korean movies in February. And starting off the series of releases, we had Space Sweepers that released on Netflix on February 5th. Space Sweepers was directed by Cho Song Yi, who also directed A Werewolf Boy and is a new endeavor in terms of genre for Korean cinema, space opera. This new SF film set in space starred an all-star cast of Song Joong Gi, Kim Tae Ri, Jin Sung Yu, and Yu Ae Jin. The movie was originally supposed to have a theatrical release last year during the summer, but was delayed due to the pandemic. It was initially delayed to wintertime, December I believe, but was then delayed again before eventually having a global release on Netflix. This is the third Korean movie that took this approach, the others being Time to Hunt and The Call, and as I said in my reviews of those movies, this is a good opportunity for the global audience to enjoy Korean films simultaneously. Also, they were able to implement tremendous amount of marketing for the film, and I'm assuming this is thanks to the movie being released on Netflix, as we all know how much money Netflix has. Take for example, this event that I had the opportunity to partake in. Honestly, there wasn't anything too special about the event itself, but it was new and interesting nonetheless. You basically go through like a car wash type thing in your car, and there's like a three-sided screen that shows some scenes of the movie. There was also the spaceship in the middle of Gangnam. Nevertheless, with the movie being released on Netflix, we do lose out on the theater going experience, and Space Sweepers is definitely a movie that would have been 10 times better on the big screens. I'll get into this more later, but first, let's check out the detailed synopsis of Space Sweepers. In the year 2092, Earth becomes nearly uninhabitable, and a major corporation called UTS builds a new orbiting home for humanity in space. However, not everyone can flee the sick Earth, and only a chosen few can venture out into their new homes. In the spaceship known as the Victory, the crew of Teo, Captain Chang, Tiger Park, and Robot Bubs collect space junk, but they unexpectedly discover a humanoid child robot named Dorothy, who's known to be a weapon of mass destruction. In order to pay off their debts and fulfill their desires, the crew members decide to partake in a risky deal to send off Dorothy. However, they find themselves in much more complicated situations than they had originally thought. Before diving deeper into the review, I'd just like to say that I'll be giving my thoughts and opinions of the movie from here on out. Therefore, there may be spoilers or parts about the movie that you may not want to hear before watching yourself. I'm going to keep spoilers to a minimum, if any, but please be aware of this. Okay then, now that we got that out of the way, let's get right into the good parts about Space Sweepers. Right off the bat, the first thing you notice about this movie is the visuals. I mean, that's kind of a given as it's an SF space opera. You can tell they invested a lot in the visual effects as the movie had one of the best CGI's in Korean films, unlike another Korean movie released last year. I really enjoyed the visuals the movie had and was ultimately satisfied. Keep in mind the budget the film had, about 24 billion Korean won, or about 22 million US dollars. Let me put that into perspective. Guardians of the Galaxy had a production budget of 232 million US dollars. Avengers Endgame had 356 million US dollars. Heck, even Star Trek the movie that came out 12 years ago had a budget of 150 million. So, for the production teams of Space Sweepers to do all of that with the limited budget it had and just shows how talented the teams were. FYI, there were a thousand people from eight companies that worked on the special effects and computer graphics of Space Sweepers. And as I mentioned in the intro, I would have loved to have seen this in the theaters. It's definitely a type of movie that would have been so much better on IMAX with booming audio. Furthermore, I liked the cast members of the film, as they were all actors and actresses that I liked. However, I can't say that they all fit their roles very well, but I'll get to this later in the bad parts. Anywho, the little kid that played the humanoid was really cute. I feel like there are so many great child actors and actresses coming out lately, and the young stars like Park So Yi and Chung Yeon Jun have such a bright future ahead of them. Space Sweepers also had a really great child actress, but the thing is, I had a much harder time than I should have in finding who that child actress was. I don't know why they didn't list her in the cast on Naver or Rotten Tomatoes, but after a little more research, I found that her name is Park Yerin, and she debuted as a child model and was in many commercials as well as the K-drama that started last year, titled Delayed Justice. 
another child actress to look forward to. Moreover, I almost always say that English acting by the non-Koreans is really bad in Korean movies, and the other way around too where Korean actors can't act in English. There are a few cases where the latter is an exception, like in the case of Lee Byung-hun for example, but the first part is almost always true. However, I must tip my hat to Richard Armitage who played Sullivan as he gave a solid performance. And you'd expect him to as he's an experienced actor who was also in the cast of the Hobbit movies. Anyhow, a good performance by him. And finally, this can go both ways in terms of being good and bad, so I'll say this here before moving on to the bad parts. The movie felt like a Hollywood film. Let me rephrase that, it felt more like a Hollywood movie with Korean actors. This was especially the case with how global the supporting cast was and the various different languages the movie had. This is good, don't get me wrong, as it was inclusive and as it was able to emulate Hollywood in terms of visuals and considering the budget. It was way better than Peninsula in that sense, which emulated Hollywood in the worst way possible. However, it also lacked the quote unquote Korean elements that makes Korean movies so special. You could probably say the movie was made in Hollywood but starred a few Korean actors and would be believable. Anyhow, let me move on to the bad parts now and I'll explain more. I mentioned earlier that I liked the cast members but I have to admit that they didn't all fit their roles very well. This may not resonate well with some people but this is my opinion and I need to say my honest thoughts. Kim Tae-ri seemed too innocent for the character of Captain Chang. I am a fan of Kim Tae-ri but maybe because of her other roles in different films but her image just didn't suit that hard, tough character of Captain Chang. Also, I felt like Song Joong-gi had too much of a good boy image to play that bad boy character of Tae-ho. However, this doesn't mean the casting was all bad. I thought Jin Seung-gyu and Yoo Ye-jin as well as the earlier mentioned child actress Park Ye-rin were great choices. Oh, and the cameo appearance in the end was good too. And speaking of the cast, although I said that Richard Armitage was good in the role of Sullivan, I can't say the same for the rest of the foreign cast. Minus Richard Armitage, my thoughts on bad English acting in Korean movies remains the same. The acting by the non-Koreans were pretty bad. On the other hand, I'm glad they didn't have the Korean actors have to speak English. Instead, they utilized this ear gear that worked as a translator and so one person can be speaking in English and the other person can be speaking in Korean but they'll be able to communicate between one another. This would be so useful in real life. Moving along, there were questionable parts that were left unanswered. The biggest of which was what exactly the condition of the antagonist, Sullivan, was. His veins started popping out and his face reddened and almost seemed as if he was going to explode. And this happened not once, but a few times throughout the movie. Like what in the hell was that? There was no explanation of what that was and what condition he had, or if he was even human. It seemed like they left a few things open to keep the possibility of a sequel open, similar to that of the other two Netflix release K movies, Time to Hunt and The Call. But like I said in those reviews as well, you should think of and focus on making a good prequel before even thinking about the sequel. Having a good foundation is key, but this wasn't a very solid foundation to stand on in my opinion. I was hoping for Space Sweepers to be the catalyst for space operas in Korean cinema, much like how Train to Busan was the force that started zombie productions for Korea. However, the film wasn't original and felt like you've seen it from somewhere as if it had mashups of different movies and lots of cliches. There were many things that were overdone such as the farting and pooping that gave it a very generic and overdone comedy feel. Overall, Space Sweepers was a good watch to kill time but don't expect anything mind blowing. It was on the longer side and I started to lose my attention about halfway through. The duration clocks in at 2 hours and 16 minutes so it is pretty long for a cave film. Space Sweepers is also available as a webtoon which I heard has different elements to it so check that out as well if you're interested. As for the film version, the story wasn't satisfying but the visuals were good which partially makes up for it. I really do hope we will be able to see more SF space movies come out of Korea. Was it the worst? No. Was it the best? Definitely not. Was it a good start? Yes, I think so. I'll give Space Sweepers a ticket price value of $11. And that concludes today's review on Space Sweepers. Thank you to everyone that watched till the end and I hope this review has given you some insight into the film. If you've seen or are planning to watch the movie, I'd love to hear your thoughts about the film so please leave a comment or join the Ian Talk Telegram group and we can further discuss over there. Please also don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like more video movie reviews. Pledge on the Ian Talk Patreon to really show your support in the work I do. Once again, thank you to everyone that watched till the end and I'll see you guys in the next one.